In today's show, I'm going to talk about Power Apps pasting in an image, right? So you've got a screenshot you've captured before and you want to paste that into Power Apps and then save that off to a data source like SharePoint. We're going to walk through all the mechanics, exactly how that works, because I used to tell people it wasn't possible. Finally, last week, I sat down and did a lot of work. It was really hard and figured out how to make it possible. Should be fun. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're going to talk about copying in or pasting in an image from like a screenshot, that type of thing inside of your Canvas apps. And the idea here is that with Power Apps, you want to be able to grab one, put it in there, and then you need to save it, right? It's like one thing to get it, but it's another to save it. So we're going to use the snipping tool. We're going to take a little screenshot, and we're going to paste that into a rich text field, and then we're going to save that over to SharePoint. And interestingly enough, like SharePoint doesn't even support that natively. I was surprised by that. And it does some weird stuff. It's a little harder than I wanted it to be. So anyway, let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so over here in my desktop, let's talk about first how SharePoint rich text fields work. So I've added one to this list. And so if we click on Nicola's record, and this is just a default SharePoint experience, if we scroll down here, I called it my rich text, kind of super creative. And then if we say edit all, and then scroll back down there, you hit the little pencil, it opens up an experience, you're like, hey, rich text, right? Just like so. Now, sometimes you're like, hey, I want to be able to get an image in there. So interestingly enough, if we run the snipping tool, let's run that real quick. All right, so there's my snipping tool. We just do a new snip and we'll just grab the word edit. I don't know, it doesn't matter, right? So if we copy that, if we jump over here, we can paste this in inside of SharePoint, right? It works. We say save, rich text edit, we say save. And then we'll just close this thing. We'll go back in there, scroll to the bottom. And so the word rich text is in there. So you know our save worked, but notice that it did not get our screenshot. So the rich text editor in SharePoint does not allow you to paste in a screenshot. So that was my first like, well, why are people asking me to do some power apps? You can't even do it in SharePoint, but whatever. We're going to solve it anyway. So in SharePoint, what you have to do if you want to get an image in here, you hit the ellipses here and you say insert image. And then you get to give it a URL that is accessible via your browser. And so in this case, I have one of one of my uh, SharePoint ones. Let's paste that in. Oh, nope. Let me copy or wait, Windows V. And then we'll paste this in right there. And we'll say save. That brings in the adorable picture of Buddy when he was really young. And so now if we say save, it's there. It's real too big. But who cares? We'll say save. And now if we exit out and then we go back in, there is the cute little buddy picture. Okay. So that's the first thing you understand on the SharePoint side of the house. This is how you get it in there. You can only insert images, but Shane, I want to be able to paste. I know. So if we jump over here and look at my lovely little power app, Oh, and let's just click on Greg. And so what we're going to do, we're going to try this to see paste. And then we will, um, we'll open up the snipping tool again. Let's do that. We'll do a snip. We'll do new. We'll just grab the little logo of Chewy here. There he is. We'll jump over here. We'll say Control V, right? And then we will say Save. The Power App will upload paste. And look, we got it in there. What? And you'll notice that now that we, because it refreshed the data source, now you can see Buddy's picture for Nicola. So it works, right? I figured it out. Well, what's the secret? I'm glad you asked. So let's go down here first and let's look at Nicola's, right? And this is how I kind of figured it out at a very high level is I did it through the browser and I'm like, all right, so what does that produce? So we click on Nicola's record. If you look right here, it's going to show you all of this junk that is in there, right? So there's a div class external, blah, blah, blah. There's a div for the style. There's a span. There's the words rich text. And then the key part we want here is image source equals HTTP, Shane's cows, blah, 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 blah the URL of our file. So interesting, right? What you need is you just need to get a HTML tag for an image and have the source be a file that is accessible. So if we go up here, let's click on my record. So we got a blank one here. So if we go in here and type in Shane and then we paste in our little image. So look over here on the right. I'm just put, this is just a label, right? Both of these are just labels for showing stuff. But the label shows you the rich text editor it put Shane in a P, right, in a uh, paragraph, and then it did an image source equals, it's not a URL, 
it is what you should know by now is called the base 64 encoding of that file. So this is the base 64 encoding. This is something we've had to work for in the past. If you've ever done any type of upload from power apps into data sources, normally SharePoint, but wherever you're sending it to, right? We need to get the base 64 representation. So when you paste in here, the rich text editor automatically makes the rich text. Hmm, right? There's our base 64. Now, unfortunately though, the base 64 does not work if we save it to SharePoint. SharePoint, if you save this to SharePoint as is, SharePoint's like, uh, I don't know what that image is, and it just drops it. It doesn't error, it doesn't do anything. It would save the word Shane, but it will not save the image. So that's kind of like a womp, womp, womp. So what did I do? So what I figured out was we could combine two concepts, right? We have the base 64. We know how to take base 64 and save a file out to our data source, right? We've done that a thousand, hundreds of millions of times in our lives at this point, right? That's how we upload. And the video for that's up there, right? Um, but basically we have a flow that does that for us, right? If we go over here to uh, my flows, it's just called easy upload. This is the one that we built the video together. I'll edit it real quick so we can look at it. But what this flow does, it has a Power Apps trigger. And then with it one, sorry, this is regular Power Apps V1 trigger. And then we just do a create file into our SharePoint document library. We pass it a file name and we pass it a file content that we then have to base 64 encode, right? And remember, the link to the video is up there if you've never done this before, but this flow does its thing. And then what we're gonna do at the end is we're just gonna respond back to Power Apps with the URL to my site and then the dynamic content of the path of the file that was just created because that's the URL. So our, the way our process works, let's see, we can go back. Let's see, close out saving. So it's gotta reload one second. Okay, so if we look at our save button, what we're going to do at a very high level is we're going to run that flow, right? And it's gonna create, it's gonna upload that base 64 and it's gonna get a far file link, the link back to that URL. And then we're going to patch in to the My Rich Text Gallery. We need, or sorry, My Rich Text, right? That's that SharePoint column. So we need to append this. This is the stuff that tells it, um, you know, this is a file or the external files are supported, right? Like don't even overthink it. Just the way that I found this, remember the one we just uploaded, let's look at Nicola's again. So when we uploaded Nicola's, oh, let's click on that, Alt, boom. Look, external class, body, 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 body. So that's how I figured out what it wanted there, right? Like I just saw that if I manually put an image in there, it wrapped it this div class, external class. Cool. What does that mean? What does it do? Don't care. I just know that we need that. So in my save button, we're gonna save back whatever they've typed in, or we're gonna save back this div class. And then we're gonna take whatever they typed in the rich text editor. We're gonna find that base 64. We're gonna find that IVB or garbage, and we're gonna replace it with the URL that came back from the flow. And then we're gonna close it out as a div. So let's look at that. So if we hit play again, Let's go down, so let's click on me, right? Because there's nothing for me right now. So if we're gonna go um, video demo. So look, typing that in, that's what the rich text controls can doing. Then we'll just go ahead and we'll hit enter. And then we're going to do a uh, Windows V and paste in the picture of Chewy. And so then look, there's now the image source, yada, yada, yada. And so now, so, right, video demo, image source, base 64. Remember, that doesn't work. Or it, it works for right now, but it won't work over in SharePoint. So to save it, we save it, it's gonna run the flow, it's gonna upload that file. And now if we click to Greg and then click back to me, so look, now what does it say? It's div class external, that stuff I told you, video demo, just like we expected, and then image source, and then the URL that came back from the flow which is the URL to the thing. And if we switch back over to SharePoint, X out and we go click on me, we go down here, look, there I am, right? It's, it does, SharePoint's none the wiser. It doesn't know that we did it with Power Apps. It just works. Kind of cool, right? So if we look at our save button, right? Let's get into the lost in the code here. And keep in mind that this looks super simple. It took me hours of like baby step trial and error to get this to work, so. Do not dismiss this as easy. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm saying, hey, we're going to first start with a with. Remember, with creates a, uh, a temporary variable called var HTML table. 
and we're going to split whatever is currently in the rich text editor. We're going to split it on the image tag. So by highlighting there, you can preview it. You can see that all the stuff that was at the front goes there. Then for the first image, there's the source, blah, 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 blah. And actually here, let's do this with a new one because it makes more sense if we do it with a new one. So let's go here to Chewy's record. Oh, hit play, test, and paste in that again. All right. So back over here to the save. This just makes, it makes it easier to read, I think. So if we do this again, look, so you can see the test, the blah, 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 and then the source data. But we know that that wouldn't work if we send it straight to SharePoint. I'm not bothering showing you it doesn't work. Trust me, it doesn't work. But so that tells us there's an image in here. So we're saying, hey, if that table has more than one row, which it does, right? Because if it didn't have an image in there and you split on image, how many rows would there be? There would just be one, right? But since we split on image, there's two. And the reason I'm saying greater than one is because if you try to do multi later, it's going to be all about greater than one. So then what we need to do is we need to uh, create a variable called var base 64 start. And to do that, we're going to find the image tag in the rich text editor. So, right, we're looking in this big hot mess, all this, we're finding this IMG tag, and then we're starting here and we're going out 32 characters. Guess where 32 characters takes you? It takes you just past the comma. It takes you to IVBOR, right? Which is where the base 64 starts. So that is how we are figuring that out, right? And that was kind of back to my whole, you know, the fun times it was my life. If it'll ever let me drag it down, please. There we go. So I figured out that from the image tag, plus 32 characters is where the base 64 starts. Then I need to find the base 64 end. So I said, hey, start in the rich text editor at the base 64 start and find the double the quote. Okay. So you might not have seen this before. Remember in Power Apps, we do double quotes around a string. But if you're trying to find a double quote, then what you have to do is you need the two double quotes around the string you're trying to find, and then you do double quotes like this together, and that tells it to find just one double quote. So that is a really hard way to say that four quotes like this in the front of the find is finding the first instance of a double quote in the rich text editor. So if we go back to our rich text editor again, and if we scroll down here, right, so it started, it starts right here, and it starts looking for a double quote. Double quotes are not valid base 64. So what that means is that the first double quote will always be at the very end of the base 64, right? So the CC double quote, that's what we're looking for. So this, like, I don't know why Power Apps is being so rude. I'm just trying to pull this down so it's fine. People can see it. Power Apps, you make me angry. One more time. Third time's a charm. Can we pull it down this time? It's okay. So that finds that, and then we don't want to know where the double quote is, though. We want to go one backwards, right? So now we've said that the, the I and IVBOR starts here. The C at the end of the string ends here. So then we can run our flow to create this var file link. We're going to name it paste and then the current timestamp.png. And we're going to find in the rich text editor the VB start, the VB end, right? That's the base 64. That's the stuff we need to encode on the other side. And so we send that to flow. Flow then turns that into a uh, file in a document library. Flow returns the SharePoint file link, which is the link to the URL of what we just created. And we store that in bar file link. Woo, you exhausted? Like that was hours of my life right there to figure all that out. But there you go. That is how we get turn the base 64, the, the copy of Chewy right there that we just screen grabbed, turn it into a file uploaded in a SharePoint document library. Like, like you know, we could go here to documents and you would see that, you know, if we sort by newer to older, look, there is the file like we literally just uploaded. It's blurry because it's a screenshot, it's okay. So then now that we've got the pieces, then we're going to patch employees, that's our SharePoint list, gallery one selected, so in this case it'd be Chewy's record selected here. And we're going to set the my rich text field to be, this is another important thing I had to figure out, right? This whole div class. So that's got to be on the front. And then you take whatever's in rich text editor, but we're going to do a replace. So all of that rich text that's in there, 
we're going to go in there and we're going to find the var base 64 start minus 22. Right? Remember, I told you this is always weird. So why minus 22? Because 32 took us to this IV, the I and the IVBOR, right? 22, if we back up 10, uh, gets us to source equals question. Uh, it gets us to the D in data, basically, right? Because the URL doesn't need the header, right? So the header wasn't needed for the upload, so we skipped it a minute ago, but we need to wipe out the uh, header. So that's why we're backing up um, here to the D and data. So we're going to wipe that out. We're going to put replace this with HTTP, SharePoint, blah, 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 the URL of the documents. And so then if we look in here, haha, it worked that time. Um, so we're replacing, we're starting at the D there. And because we backed up 22 characters, I said 10 a minute ago, I meant we backed up 22 characters, then we also need to add 22 characters here to the, the end because we basically, we need to go the right length, right? So the length needs to be 22 characters longer because this isn't actually, you know, this is trying to find the right spot in the file. But remember, we manipulated where we were before and we actually want the double quote because we want to replace all the way through our friend, whatever this is at the end. Oh, too hard to scroll. This CC, but we want to keep the double quote because after the URL, I need the double quote and then all of this stuff. Are you exhausted? I am. It was really hard. But there you go. And then, of course, then at the end, we bolt on a div. And just once again to prove it, now that you've seen it, so this is what we've got. We hit save. And then as soon as it refreshes, you're going to see there's the div class, there's the test, image source equals, there's our double quote, HTTP, right, the URL we got back from SharePoint, double quote, close P, close P, or close image, close P, and then close div which all lines up with exactly what we did with the save. And then here I'm doing a separate patch. So remember this if, so this way the button works, whether there is a, um, there's one image or there's no images, right? So that's what this particular button was done, done to, was set up to do. So kind of interesting, kind of crazy, kind of over the top. I agree in all of counts. Now, Keep in mind that this code really only works for creating new paste entries. Um, if you want, and it only works for new entries, it only works for entries with either zero or one pasted in image. Um, it, doesn't, um, it doesn't handle multiple images. It doesn't handle editing. And so I did sit down and figure out all that, but it's like borderline rocket science to do that. <laughs> So I decided that I'm not going to put that in the video. Um, if you download the app, right? So if you subscribe over at training.powerapps911.com to our YouTube library, then you can download the app and the multi-save code is in there. But there's about five other variables that come into play when you start doing multi-saves, right? Because now you have to figure out if, they're, if you're editing, is it a new image or an existing image? Because you can't reprocess an existing image. You have to skip existing images um, there's also the whole challenge around blanking it out. There's the challenge around if there is no images um, and they're all existing. There's just a bunch of little nuances. But the good news is if you're like, Shane, I want to solve that on my own, all of the hints or most of the hints are in here, right? I can tell you that the split is a big part of it, right? So splitting and doing the for all. But then you just have to start adding some traps for existing things. So. Anyway, we're not going to cover it. It's too hard for a YouTube video, um, but you can download it there. Or you can always hit us up on our consulting side and we can build it for you. But that's not the point. The point was I thought it was too crazy for this. So there you go. This is something that people have asked me for for a long time. And I used to say it was impossible, right? Especially because it didn't work over in SharePoint. So why would it work in Power Apps? And the right person asked me at the right moment last week. And I was like, I want to figure this out for once and for all. And I just had to iterate and iterate and iterate and iterate. It took me four or five hours to find all the different permutations, but it works. It's possible. So what do you guys think? Thoughts, comments, ideas? Leave them below. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoy this. You know, I realize this isn't like a solution that you are exactly looking for, but hopefully it gets the brain going on, you know, just what is possible, you know. And it, a lot of it goes back to one of, the, one of our students today said, you know, 
Just throw a label on the screen and see what's there. That was the key to my success, right? I went and did it in SharePoint and then I added a label in Power Apps to see what SharePoint showed from doing it in the SharePoint experience. And I was like, okay, I see what you create on your own. How do I replicate that? As soon as I knew what I had to make, I was able to make it. All right, folks, that is all I've got for today. With that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day. Hey, me again. Before you go, click on the subscribe button, right? Join the list of 100,000 plus people that have subscribed already. Or if you need any help, right? Check us out at Power Apps 91. We do big projects, little projects. We do training. We do everything and we can help you. Or if you want to see more videos, you probably do, then just click on the playlist above. Cool? Thanks and have a great day.